Today is February 15th. It's supposed to be the day's pitcher and catcher's report, plural, on days there by accident. I apologize up front. Uh, they're not reporting, and our hearts are broken, and Valentine's Day was yesterday, so this is the Heartbroken Yankees episode. Let's talk Yanks. Killer intro, Jimmy. Bang up job. Talking it. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks, presented by SeatGeek. My name is Jimmy. Sitting next to me is Jake. Behind the desk, we have producer BBD. Brought to you by SeatGeeks. SeatGeeks, mm. bunch of geeks in mm. seats. First thing that comes to your mind when you think of a bunch of geeks in seats. See, I had it the other way. I just had people that are obsessed with chairs. Mm. Yes. Like a seat geek. They're obsessed with the shape of the back, like, uh, they geek the it, They geek out. Like that scene from uh, Knocked Up. The under the chair that people are always scared to like Touch get down there, there and yeah. like, okay, what's this knob Everyone's do? Everyone's like, boogers. People that are obsessed with that. Oh, okay. I was thinking of like, uh, you know, like a uh, uh, debate team f- state finals and all the other teams are in the audience and it's mm. just just a bunch of geeks in seats. Geeks in seats, baby. Yeah. So, G-I-S. oh, thank you very much, Sam. Sam brought my backpack into the room, a little behind the scenes start of the episode. Jake, Seat Geek, we're going to a game tonight. We will be sitting in seats. I believe we, uh, I said on the show that I was looking to get uh, my tickets via Seat Geek because they let you know the best seats possible. They rake, they rake. They rake. They rake, dude. They're fucking, they're so they're good. Locked at in right seats. now. They're like going, He's five for his last day. He's locked in. Imagine talking Seat to after baseball. seat after seat. Uh, they rate each ticket from zero to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. Mm-hmm. They got the app. They'll hook you up. And if you use code Yanks, you get $20 off at SeatGeek. Code Yanks for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. How you doing, Jake? How are the slopes? James. Big Baby David, everyone live in the chat. Got the chat popped right now. What up? What up? Uh, it's good, man. Good. Park City is a, uh, a wild little town. A State great PC. skiing. Yeah, 47 Goons. Um, was back there. Was going to take a picture, but we were running late for something. And if I took a picture of the alleyway, just... Well, nobody understands that combo. Uh, Park City was good, man. Got two good ski days in. Uh, really ripped it up. Was proud of my legs. Held up better than I thought. That video that got posted was awesome. So, uh, my sweet Jessica. Um, effervescent. Effervescent. She um, she kept saying it was her birthday, uh, which you, is only I'm not. You were in college. I am not. Oh, well, in college. If any would, reason for anything. Yeah, birthday week. Was, I mean, you were a bir- You were a birthday week person. Yeah, why not? In Milford House. In college. No. Yeah, I remember it. No. You just need the... That becomes the days. You need the Thursday, Friday that aligns with your birthday. That's all you need there. Um, but, yeah, Jess, I mean, we were like two weeks out from her birthday, and she was saying it was her birthday. Um, but we went to this uh, Apre, Apre ski thing. That's what the kids are all about. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was lucky. I was rolling with, uh, like, four beautiful women. Um because, yeah, I mean, we, we got hit on by some older guys. It was pretty nice. We got invited to, like, a private section. The place was going up. And, you know, the guy, Derek, really nice guy. We're texting. How's he spell it? This is a, this is a, this is you a one. Like you, you can go like so it. south. He's from, he's from Alabama. He's from the south. So How's he spell it? Because, um, I mean, as Yankee fans, there's one way to spell Derek. And some parents just completely botch it. Don't tell me he's 2-R-C-K. 1-R-I-C-K. Well, that's either... That's almost maybe worse, I think, because they kind of a blending. He's from the South, Derrick. 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 Uh, he was a good dude. I had a good time. Um, glad to be back. Super Bowl's over. Baseball lockout under. Uh, still going on. So excited to talk some Yanks, man. And, like, dude, I, you know, I know we're, we're going to Valentine's Day a little heartbreak a little bit, but even talked to Trev a little bit on Wake and Jake this morning, and he mentioned, like, one baseball line, and we're both like, ooh, 
how cool would it be if we could talk? Oh, we're talking about Jonathan India and his stat line from last year. And we're like, man, how cool would it be to like talk about that? So you think and what that you means? Think India tuned into the blitz ball battle. Not last yet. Night? I think he's going to. I uh, think they're going to post a lot of show, socials comparing Zo and him. Yeah, they just did. Um, oh, they did. Him and uh, but him, Trev and Jonathan India were were Hanging messaging out. at the Super Bowl. So, um, so yeah, had a had a good trip. Excited for baseball, man. Excited for baseball. How are you doing? Well, it's not happening. Baseball. Yeah. It's bad news, Bears. I have a terrible headache right now, as you know. Thanks to everyone that tuned in to our Blitzball battle. Yeah, if you did, it's uh, that was a really good turnout. Yeah, for the first ever episode of a new venture. So, um, if you're missing baseball, which you are, yeah, go check that out. Now, well, we don't have to do a full Blitzball conversation here, sure, but um, it gets so intense. Yeah. Joe's and I. Joe's does Yankee stuff, so I can t- chat about it. Yeah, him. we love Joe's. We went to the, because we're starting the next, uh, for filming the next league this Friday. We right. don't have to be secretive anymore. No. But, um, so me, Joe's, and Kyle were at the warehouse doing a scrimmage game, messing around, getting loose. Mm. And it was like, um, it was so weird because it was just the, sh- the warehouse. You right. know, it was quiet and nothing was going on. And I'm like looking around, I'm like, man, we really like built up like an atmosphere. And Kyle and Joe's were like, yeah, dude, oh, like it time. felt special those last two days in there. Like it was like an energy. Uh, Once the elimination game started. Yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. oh, shit. So I'm super excited for everyone to go watch. If you haven't, if you haven't checked it out, uh, go check it out. It's like the biggest production um, John Boy Media has ever done. I think all 30 plus employees played a uh, like an important role in, yeah. in putting it on and putting it. Uh, getting it all done, and Jake and I uh, played in game one. Go check it out. Check it out. No spoilers. <clears throat> no spoilers. Spoiler-free show. All right. Heartbreak time? Mm. Yeah? You ever have a sad Valentine's Day? No. Um, I don't think I have. I don't care enough about it. I think the story I told on here probably last year was, you know, just like the classic Mom got me a box of chocolates to give to a girl at school, and I ate them all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I used to get really upset on Valentine's Day when my mom wouldn't get me anything. There you go. Because my dad would get the girl something. Yeah. And I I think I was like five years old, and I said, Mom, why don't you get, like, why can't right. I be your Valentine? And I think my mom realized, oh, I'm sexist. And there was a real, you know, reorganizing of her sexist brain. Wow. It's an eye opener. <laughs> Shots fired at mom early. <laughs> no, no, Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, mom. <laughs> mom. Uh, no, but Katie flipped the switch on, the switch on me uh, yes, yesterday. She wow. got me a present. And I'm like, what? Wow. We don't. Going I thought on, we had a Going on six years, like not, neither of us have ever cared about Valentine's yeah. Day. Um, and then I said, like, just let me know. Like, I'll start doing Valentine's we're doing Day. Like, this. let me know. Like, yeah. But you, you kind of sh- shocked me here. And then she said... Yeah, I think I'm a little more like mushy now because we had she's got two boys in her yeah. life. So moving forward, more and I'm love fine. To give. I'm more love I'm to a give. sap. I can do like sure. Valentine's presents and and get into the whole thing. We just had never done it as a right. couple, so she got me a nice present. Nice. Yeah. So now I'm in. So uh, let's hear about some Yankees that we thought were nice presents. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Number one. Hey, Jake. Uh, Jimmy, BBD, this is uh, Cliff from South Carolina. Uh, I mean, there's obvious ones like Jacoby Ellsbury that everybody could say were a heartbreaker, but mine's from a little bit ago. It's uh, Carl Pavano. You know, we bought high. I think it was 2004. He had a pretty high ERA, uh, ERA plus, I should say. And, uh, you know, he didn't give us very much throughout the year. We got three years out of him. And uh, it really, you know, was upsetting, especially with a big signing like that. Thanks, guys. And uh, Jake sucks. Mm. Ooh. What was that? I, I somewhat agree. I don't think broke in the heart is is the feeling with Pavano. Okay, Ellsbury for sure. And I don't think Ellsbury broke any Yankees' heart. No. I think it was more like they like everyone kind of knew. Everyone was excited that he was bad because they were like, "Yeah, we didn't want him anyway." Just like everyone whole way. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, like I don't. Kinda. That was the peak of like giving out bad contracts in baseball. Yeah, I think people were wishing it wouldn't work out so we don't do it yeah. again, almost. Yeah. And like that's how and then the, it was that bad. Carl Pavano, mm. he wasn't like um a crush that broke our heart. It was kind of like I'm on a date 
and we're hanging mm. out. And then a girl just walks by and goes, uh, hey, fuck you and your date. I hate you. I, I just felt more like spit on and disrespected than broken heart by Carl Pavano. So the only thing where I'm going to differ there, Jim, and you know this about me, is I am a proud, proud Connecticutian. Mm -hmm. And Carl Pavano, Connecticut guy, Italian last name. Like, dude, if the Yankees signed Pavano and this was, like, live, they would have been playing the Italian music in and out of breaks like they were with Gallo and Rizzo. Mm. Like, Pavano, the Connecticut kid... So I was pretty dialed in, especially, you know, he was he was 29 and he just came off two good years. His last year is his best year easily, but there were two pretty good seasons. So I was, you know, I was definitely drinking the Carl Bovano Kool-Aid. Yeah, me um, and you got into our, like our biggest drunkest fight in college over Carl Pavano. Not like a real big fight, but it was like, definitely like we were drunk after the bar. And then went our separate ways <laughs> and went to sleep about mad about at each other about Carl about Um I was, uh, you know, when Mike Messino bad mouths you, mm. you're kind of on the outs for right away for me. Like, you can't have the, the lead leader of the pack mm. publicly calling you out. You're not, then, then I'm, I'm team sure. no Pavano. Sorry. Just an element of uh, never really got a chance. Did he get an opening day start? Yeah, Did we like, do that one. Yeah, day? but yeah. it was like at the very end. It was, I think it was two thousand eight, right? Yeah, something like weird happening. Yeah, who got no, it. not uh, when did he got an opening day start? But it was, it was either or was that Brown? No, I no, think Pavano got April second, two thousand seven. Was that opening day? That's the question. For, I think so. Yeah. Two starts, and then he was out. <laughs> Yankees won 9-5. Hell yeah. Let's see the Yankees lineup that day. Damon, Jeter, Abreu, A-Rod, Giambi, Matsui, Posada, Cano, Josh Phelps. That's that's the lineup that um, I think for you, BBD, it's like the Swisher Granderson one that like tugs at your... This one gets me too, but does? I, know okay. you, I know what you're referring to. Because well at yeah because yeah. the Swisher Granderson doesn't do like I wouldn't like for you. but this one I'm like oh yeah it's like butterflies like yes my, my guys Posada A Rod Homer that day hell yeah Doug Mankiewicz in as a defensive replacement for Phelps yeah a couple hit by pitches it looks like yeah big game yeah big game so Pavano heartbreaker damn okay. Hey guys, Mike from Syracuse, first time listener, long time caller. You're asking for a Yankee that broke my heart. There's only one real answer, and it happened two years in a row. So roll this Chapman, man, 2018, 2019. And your season's eliminated on uh, walk off home runs. It, you know, it breaks your heart in multiple ways because one, you lose and the season's over. Two, you gave the other team such a gift and a memory and a highlight that's just going to be replayed forever. You know, you'd rather lose six nothing. Because then it's not a moment in baseball history. It's not on any highlight reels. Yeah, me and uh, me and Joe's McFly were having a pretty good giggle the other day because we were talking about like how good that DJ LeMahieu Homer is. Oh, I know. And like it's it's just it's not forgotten. Like any Yankee fan will bring it up and be like, "Yeah, I mean DJ clutch Homer," but like that was like the Homer of Homers. That's like saving season saving. Against the Astros. Um, and then, yeah, man, I mean, you know, talking Yanks faithful, remember that I was, uh, you know, I was on a pretty big, like, trade Chapman kick just because I couldn't go out the same way again. Like, if you're going to fool me three times in a row, dude, I can't do that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. It is. I was thinking of more like busts that you believed in because, right? Like, obviously, heartbreaking. Heartbreak. Oh, I'm trying to trying to play the next one, and the volume's off, and that's my fault. That's okay. And that's just all it is. And that's okay. my fault. That happens. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sam. So you got a Yankees player that broke my heart. And what's his name? By far, it's got. 
Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sam. So you guys want to know a Yankees Sam's? player that broke my heart. And by far, it's got to be Robinson Cano. I mean, when he left for Seattle, signed all that big money. He was one of my favorite players from the 09 uh, World Series team. And then, you know, then when he goes back to the Mets, gets traded to the Mets. And, you know, yeah, whatever. But, uh, yeah, it's got to be Robinson Cano for sure. Um, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> That's and, uh, heartbreak. Series team, and then you know, then when he goes back to the Mets, gets traded to the Mets, and you know, yeah, whatever. But... Like, yeah, <laughs> he accepted that trade. <laughs> like that's <laughs> he, ex- he accepted. He should have told Seattle no. Like that's that emotion from Valentine's Day was like ex girlfriend, like start dating another guy he was really pissed at, mm-hmm. and then she ended up dating a guy like. That he kind of like understood, but it's like okay, whatever. Like I'm not okay. This is with the Mets now. What am I gonna do with that? Um, man, <sighs> where were you at when Cano left, Jim? That was also when we were roommates in college. Because uh, I remember like finding out in uh, DBC house on our couch playing Wii golf. It's like around that time, twenty. 20- 2013 off season. No. I'm on Cano's baseball reference right now. He was a Yankee through 2013. So is it great? You're, you're thinking of different heartbreak. I don't think so. Might have been we were living together or something. We were together when we found out. Uh that was just, that was eye opening. I just didn't think it was gonna happen. I just didn't think right. that it would like. I just didn't think they were going to let him go. Um, I understood it. I was old enough, like we, yeah. uh, at the time, like I think graduated college, understood how money and like ex- accepting the most money is an okay right. thing to do. So I wasn't like mad at Cano. Was that I, the first time the Yankees really got outbid? Y- yeah, they really wouldn't. But that's that was the thing where I was like, well, if, I had blind trust in the Yankees. So my thing was, if the Yankees don't, like the Yankees right. go get, and they go get the guys they want. So if they let them slip, like I think they might, and I think they, and I, in retrospect, I think they kind of were onto some of the steroid stuff and all that. It was also Jay-Z just made his new right. sports agency, and they wanted to be really, you know, splashy. Like I was just upset he went on. to Seattle because I was like, I'm not going to know anything about right. him anymore because he's playing on West Coast time and late. But I know it's crazy, man. Like I, I remember obviously the Cano stuff has kind of gone off the deep end now with some of the steroid stuff and this, that, and the other. You know, I I remember it initially being like, you know, Robinson Cano's been such a such a disappointment in Seattle. His stats <laughs> Well, he's one of the best second basemen are, like, ever. Dude, but even in since Seattle, so since he signed that new contract, so this includes his time with the Mets. 860 games, 292, 348, and 819 OPS. Yeah, it's really good. Like, you know, I know before that he was, you know, kind of otherworldly for the five years before that. But, dude, you factor in, like, sprinkling a little Yankee Stadium and some short porch jobs he would have gotten, like. <laughs> With his Cano's, defensive reputation. Yeah, Robinson Cano is an, like an, an all-time baseball player. You you are right though with our perspective of like, I can't imagine if we were middle school early high school and that happened, like yeah. I would have been like, "Good no, he's leaving the Yankees for the Mariners." I don't get it, but it's about money, people. Yeah, it was like right over that window of like, were you, you know, mad BBD? I think I was a junior in high school when it happened, so still so little romantic. I remember I remember having the distinct thought because it was a the 10 year deal there and using the Yankee Niners. He's going to be in the hall of fame as a Mariner, not a Yankee. <laughs> this is bullshit. Uh, don't do not to worry about it, I guess, but it's a sad day. Yeah. He was good. He was good. I remember like it's talk funny. radio, like WFN saying like, he doesn't have billboard appeal and uh, he still doesn't. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. A little bit. Like he like it's not like Judge right now who's on like every right. commercial, every advertisement. Like Cano, maybe it's a rude language barrier thing that maybe like I shouldn't accept as easily as I'm accepting mm. it right now. I don't know, but it was never like 
Robinson Cano and the Yankees. Because he's handsome. Yeah. He's a good-looking dude. And he's, like, cool, smooth. Yeah. Now is the steroid controversy and all that stuff. I right? mean, I, I guess the other thing that kind of hurt Robbie at the time and maybe we would have viewed him differently was, I mean, you know, he was A-Rod, Jeter, like... Yeah, he was the... He's ba- supposed to be next. Even, even Curtis Granderson on that, his last Yankee team, like, Curtis Granderson has... Yeah, awesome personality and stuff. So maybe it was just like an overshadowed thing by these other guys who are massive. Yeah. Mm. Like massive personalities. Next caller. Hey, guys. I'm going to say Hogan Treras, 2003. Mm. I believe it was game five. He comes in for Wells, lets up four runs to the Marlins. Then the following year, traded for the... Chicago accepting an offer for him, takes him away, and then he goes and helps them win a World Series. Just so much hype around him, and pretty sure Steinbrenner said he would fire anyone who didn't sign him, and then he comes in and kind of poops the bed. Uh, good luck. Enjoy. Jose Contreras. It's an interesting one. The birth of the evil empire. It's from the Jose Contreras uh, signing. It was when mm. the Red Sox called them uh, the Evil Empire. So it's actually a good story. They were yeah. like in the same hotel room, and they, yeah. they left to uh, – the Red Sox were talking to Jose Contreras. Uh, this is some details correct, but not fully. Yeah. They left. They talked to Jose Contreras. They left. As they left, they saw the, the Cashman's guys walking in, and they just went, fuck. Yeah. We don't got them. It was over, which, hey, how different is that 10 years before Robinson Cano? Even for Seattle, um, yeah, and you know, I mean, I, man, they traded him quick. I I always laugh. Yeah, man, because dude, look at Contreras' first year: eighteen games, nine starts, a, th- a three three point three ERA, more strikeouts than inning pitch by one. But still, at the time, like strikeouts were not that level. Like they were that level, but that was like a high strikeout rate. I'm a uh... Why? I wish I had better memories of this. Contreras' first year? Yeah, what was his contract when they traded him? Because that first year isn't bad. Yeah, but the second year... I know, I know, but... But how bad was the second year then? He was he was 18 starts, and he was only starting. So I'd love to know. I'd love to pick Contreras' year on that. Um, but yeah, he was 18 games of five, six, four ERA. So dude, I mean, he had, look at his month of July in his, uh, 2004 year. He gave up seven earned runs to the Mets. The next three games, he goes 6.2, one earned eight, one earned seven, one earned. They must have tried to be shopping him when he's like on the right path in those three games. The next two after that. Terrible. Eight yeah. earned to the Red Sox, seven to Baltimore, and then they trade him. And and uh, then he's better on the White Sox. But the, how long did those, like, he must have had years, and Loiza, who they traded for, no, Loiza was a rental. Did they only sign Contreras for two years? I wonder if he was, he must have, like, tipped his pitches or something because he was pretty gross. He had the fork ball, which yeah. was nasty. But then he was on the White Sox through 2009. So the Yankee, I'm need, I need, a, need like, I need like a Yankee. Refresher. Like, can we call like Brian Hoke? Was he covering the Yankees at that point? Did Brian Hoke a call. I mean, he'll know. Like he's, he debuted at 31. 32. Just like being older. 32 million four-year contract. Gave up after you. When did two. Brian Hoke start covering the Yanks? I, th- I think 09 or something. I remember him saying like the World Series year, I think was one of his first years. Do I got to call Curry then? So I think the the White Sox, I think, re-upped him. So let's okay. see. One, two, three. Yeah, his, his, the last year of his contract, 30 starts, 4-2-7 ERA. He was an all-star that year. So the White Sox definitely re-upped him. So the the Yankees signed him to a four-year deal. Four-year 32. So they got 
bailed so, midway they through the bailed second year. Quick. For for Esteban Loiza, like why didn't they try him in the bullpen or, or like you know just right, try why to like bail? fix him? Why'd they bail so quick for a rental in Loiza? Who was he good for the Yankees when he came over? I mean, not he really he was coming. No, he was awful. He was coming off the year before Loiza finished second in the Cy Young. So I think the Yankees were hoping they could tap into that, and he got knocked around. So Yankees just kind of lost that all the way around. And then yeah. wasn't Loiza the guy that's like the big time drug smuggler? I think so. Bon Loiza. Yeah, I think so. Like big time, yes. Yeah. All right. How so Contreras broken heart. I'm actually like just curious about the the behind the scenes there. Sure. They punted quick. Here's the next one. That's a recent one. What's going on, boy? Jake BBD. Good to hear you all. I guess uh, I'm calling in to add my uh, Yankee heartbreaker. And for me, that's going to be Greg Bird. Now, Greg Bird, mm. I really enjoyed him in his time in pinstripes. However, what breaks my heart is the promise that was lost. I thought he had a lot of hope, and for that lefty bat at first base, I thought he was going to fill the void that we needed. Additionally, Greg Bird broke my heart in another way, where a few years back, we actually played some uh, PlayStation together. We added, he added me on uh, mm. as a friend. And uh, I've, I found out recently that he unfriended me on PlayStation, so he really broke my heart. Uh, well, that's my story. Thanks, guys. Uh, go Yanks, and have a good one. Go Yanks. Yeah, the birds. I, I wish he didn't have that that injury that um, that got mishandled, and then I and then I wonder how how it would have handled. It's tough. Greg Bird, first like Yankee that reached out to us. Um, because his friend was a Peyton was a was a fan. Secret, secret cool. name. Yes, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just tough. <clears throat> it's tough looking back. Um, because you know I know some of them are small sample size. I mean that one year with the eighty two games, but that was the foot injury year, right? Where he was twenty seven, twenty seventeen, or twenty twenty eighteen was he played eighty two games, but he didn't didn't hit. Well, but the. Yes, but right. I mean, I was well versed in this in the time. Right, the first um, month of that right. season, he was playing on an undiagnosed broken heel. Right, that because because there was like a, a he he had a bone in his heel called like the ballerina bone or something like that that uh, they didn't diagnose, they didn't take X rays of it, so they thought he had a bad bone bruise, right. and they were telling him just to play through it, and he just couldn't like pivot and swing at all. And then uh, eventually they said, oh, this is bad. So they went, he went and got it fixed. And then his numbers were good after that. It's, uh, it's insane. I mean, I can only imagine, you know, he's, he's still trying to fight. He played 112 games in AAA last year. Albuquerque, 894 OPS. It's like higher altitude than course, so you get your numbers boosted, but... Man, baseball's brutal sometimes. Yeah. Maybe comes back to camp with the Yanks. Come on, Greg. He was one of the first, like, prospects I really liked as an adult. Um, debuted, like, while I was in college or whatever. And, it, like, a, I think I've said, like, a, I don't know if I'll, like, root for a single person as hard as that. <laughs> Not, be just, like, I wanted him to be good so bad. Because, like, the next lefty power first right. baseman. I was like, oh, just didn't work. When did, that was 2018 when all that went down? I'm trying to remember. You know, you know, Poppy's not good with years. I think it was 17, and then he came back for the playoffs. Yeah, because he has the, the homer. Yeah, it was 17. Okay, yeah. yeah. In 18, he was, he was hurt out of the gate. He didn't play till May. But yeah, he didn't didn't hit at all. In seventeen, they they had him in April and May trying. To, he was playing on a broken heel. They sent him to the minors to like rehab, Fix it. and it was just 
like he was like, no, it's still broken. They finally he they got they fixed it. He came back up and he had an 891 OPS with 575 slugging, eight home runs and blah blah. So yeah, I didn't work out. Rooting for him. Tough. Come back, Greg. To Major League Baseball. What's up, guys? Zach here from New York. I hope you all were Roman ready for that day, but we all know you were. Um, I would say the Yankee that broke my heart the most was actually Jacoby Ellsbury. Um, I remember being really excited about the about the signing when it happened. Obviously, it was a weird time in Yankees history there, a uh, bit of a dark time. But I um, was super excited about it, and then obviously it really didn't pan out. And then to put the cherry on top, we found Jacoby, so he ruined your documentary idea. We found it, but he was in a Red Sox uniform at Fenway. So to add insult to injury, I would have to say Jacoby Ellsbury. Thanks, guys. That's that's a bizarre one to me. I mean, I get it with the finding Jacoby stuff. Yes, that broke, dude. That did break my heart when he showed up at up. Fenway, and we're like, no, okay." So, I like half of my heart was like, "Good, like, yes, be a Red Sox," and then the other half was like, "But now we can't do our documentary. We had huge funding for it. All of the funding that we had for it. I mean, you want to know? You want to know? You know, Jim? Mm-hmm. Maybe everyone listening." The part that hurts me about Jacoby the most, and I've ranted on here about it, second time, I think I ranted to Joe's and Chris McFly about this at our holiday office soiree we had. 2017, Jacoby Ellsbury went into the playoffs on fire. His last month in 2017, Jacoby Ellsbury was going nut job at the plate. 337, 436 on base, a 912 OPS. And then in the playoffs, they went straight Hicks because they wanted the defense in center field. Hicks Hicks had a good first series. He was awful against the Astros. So here I am, final memories of Jacoby Ellsbury before he went missing, and then we had to find him at Fenway, is that I wanted him. <laughs> In the 2017 Astro series, I was calling for Jacoby Ellsbury, and they wouldn't go to him because um, they just wanted to lock in Hicks's arm. Um, so that's which did kind of like you saw it pay off where they just wouldn't take the extra base on him those postseason. Right, yeah. right. I mean, and I get it. I get what they were doing, but you're also. I mean, you had a DH Headley. You had to. So it was just not a lot of room. <sighs> <sighs> Jacoby Ellsbury was hot. By the way, really good career for Jacoby. 31 war. Hey, wow. what's up, guys? It's Hunter from Nebraska. Uh, so, a Yankee that has just disappointed me and has a special place in my heart. We think about the relievers, Adovino, a certain lefty from the Angels that cannot be named. But one that really sticks out to me is it's Luis Setta. I mean... We love him. I love him. You love him. He's doing great things over there. He's going to be good for them. And we know how the bullpen is going to shape out. We got some question marks with how Chad's been. And Britain's obviously going to miss some years. So, I know Matt. Uh, I love him. I miss him. Go Yanks. Jake sucks. Wow. Did uh, someone, I made the video uh, when they Louis Sessi got traded, and it was like, goodbye to you, my lonely friend. I hope to see you in the end. Whatever that song is. Sure. And uh, and then people were commenting like, was it Max? Someone re-brought this up on Yankees Twitter. And they were just like, I can't believe we traded Luis Sessa just to dump Justin Wilson yeah. for salary. When like. They didn't use the he space. Was they finally like becoming a good reliever. He and became the Luis Sessa they believed in. That's the fun part about baseball and, and having, like, your guys. Like, Luis, like no one cares about Luis Sessa outside of the Yankees world at this point. But, oh, I mean, with the cockroach, we had seen him survive, survive, survive. And then he was, like, like starting, to, starting to thrive. And then just because they signed Justin Wilson and his dead arm, then we had to lose Sessa. And it's not a big deal. No, like, right. It's not like losing, you know, Mo or D-Rob or Batansis, right. but, you know, but it's still like, if he's like a lockdown reliever on the Reds now, it's like, it would have been a really cool completion of the story arc. 
Justin Wilson, who was also good on the Reds after we traded him. Um, yeah, we kind of <laughs> broke our own hearts with Louis Sessa, which how, how sick is that? Um, yeah, and it's funny. We just did the bullpen episode, and I mean, like, there's a spot. There's a spot for him that's kind of – it's also, you know, bullpen the Yankees are in an okay place with normally. But, yeah, man, I mean, I – you know, Luis Sessa survived a lot as a Yankee. His past 112 games, 3-3-9 ERA. Um, you know, the past two years, you know, it's an ERA in the two. So, like, hey, good for Luis Sessa. Um, he's figured it out. It, it does suck that that's – that's how it ends. That's how That's this whole, is. this whole roller. Like <clears throat> in our dream world, if we were riding it, like this ends with Luis Sessa pitching like two two extra innings in like a ALDS game and shoving. And we're like, that's no. how that's how this was supposed Yan- to end. Yanks are down four nothing, and he just holds. after three. And he pitches the fourth and the fifth and, and, and third. third. He gets a third. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say same thing. Two and a third. Two and a third. That's just coming out for a third. And the Yankees they come back and win. And then on talking Yankees recap, we're like, you know, and everywhere they're like, and don't forget don't to forget give love Sessa. to Sessa. He held him. Sessa. He retained order. None of this happens if Sessa doesn't pitch those three innings. What a great role. Yeah, and that's like win win. Mike. It's like almost literally what Chad Green did in that wild card game, right? Mm. He went, or was yeah. D-Rob, D-Rob came in and held for three. D-Rob, fuck, I love that guy. Like, obviously, they, they had higher leverage abilities that we knew at the time. But. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, this is a good one. Hey, guys, what's going on? Justin from Long Island here. Love the show. Um, I'm calling in to tell me that the Yankee that broke my heart the most in recent memory was Sonny Gray. Uh, Mm. You know, we traded for him. uh, First couple of starts, he looked kind of promising. And especially with the way our rotation has been the past couple of years, it would have been really nice to have a solid, solid number two, uh, especially behind Cole right now. So Sonny Gray is the Yankee that broke my heart the most. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Jake sucks. Mm. At the end there, it got weird. Weird call. I I really wanted Sonny Gray to work out because he's yeah. a good pitcher and he's and he's good in Cincinnati and he's got fun stuff. It was a little deer in the headlights, a little maybe they're a behind on the pitching technology that he needed or d- wrong Mindset. philosophies, different mindsets. He was good on the road, so I don't think it was all. Uh, just like the pitching and and Larry Rothschild and like a, a bad mix there because he did have he, his road numbers were good right yeah so I do think it was a little bit just not the right environment for him uh, plus if they had Matt Blake or someone more advanced at the time maybe it would have been better as well but it's a good trade I mean I I stand by that that was a good trade that didn't work out for reasons other than Sonny Gray's skill set you can't know that before you trade a guy yeah. Yeah, I mean, it 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 gets interesting. I mean, it, we'll see what James Caprillion really turns into. He kind of had a breakout breakout year last year, but still, we don't know what that means in the realm of baseball. I know and what and you're they, saying, they, but they, Yankees still needed an asset to pitch <clears throat> at the time, so they went out and got Sonny Gray and yeah. a pitcher. Yeah, they needed, they needed 18, 19 help. And, and Sonny was a year and a half removed from a third-place Cy Young finish. He had a couple, like, playoff games. Like, there's no reason to think he couldn't handle pressure pitching. The trades that don't make like, sense that I need to understand why the Contreras for the wise of that like that kind of still doesn't make sense. Mm. That trade still the Sunny Great trade still makes sense to me. It just didn't work out how we wanted it to. Sometimes trades don't work out. And uh yeah, I mean I I was a Sunny advocate. I I kind of wasn't ready to fully punt on him because I mean kind of look what's happened like it and that's where when whenever we talk trades or free agency, value is is the word that comes up. And you know the Cincinnati Reds, it made sense for them to take a bet on Sonny Gray and try to extend them. That now the Cincinnati Reds, you know, they've got a really good two or three <clears throat> starter um, that they locked up. It was like a four for forty type contract. Where if Sonny Gray had hit free agency after one of his money years, I mean. He would have got paid, paid, paid. Um, mm-hmm. So kind of sucks for Sonny. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, the, the home road stuff sucked, and that really makes you get in your head, and you have one or two bad quotes. But he was beloved by the guys. Like, that was kind of the start of R2C2, and they always... I mean, CC, picture that. Like, CC will tell you. <laughs> if it's not going on or if you're not the dude. And he had Sonny's back. He's like, Sonny Gray's a dude. Like, that 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 guy's a baller. He's cool in the clubhouse. Like, he puts in the work. It uh, It's unfortunate it went down how it did. But it ended up being a bad bet by the Yanks. Speaking of bad bets, I bet uh, the, uh, the Super Bowl would go to overtime. And the Bengals had it. They were driving. They could have kicked a field goal, and it would have went into overtime. And then that fourth and one play. Yeah, and third and one. Yeah, but I my dad texted me. He's like, "Ooh, like overtime's in play." Yeah, could have won a thousand bucks. I told Katie, "I said you don't want to stay. We could win a thousand bucks." Yeah, she said, "No, I don't care." I said, "I'll buy you something with it." She said, "I don't care." Still don't care. So I lost that bet. I placed it on DraftKings. Uh, and they're now turning to the NBA, NBA. Jake. One dollar on any team, and you get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets. We're going to an arena tonight that has NBA games being played inside yeah. of it. At times, sometimes not tonight, but not tonight. At times, customers can also bet on the NBA with same game parlays. Yeah. Wow! Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. Bet just one dollar on any NBA team and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they win. That's promo code JOHNBOY at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. They're back to shorter disclaimers, so you know I can still crush it, but the twenty second mark isn't appropriate. But here we go. Must be, starting over, one, two, one, two, three, four. Must be 21 plus and physically present in New York. Eligibility restrictions apply. Minimum $5 deposit. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for full details. Gambling problem? Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. That's short. Mm. 10 10 seconds. Got to get under that. Got to get under that. Like a good sprinter. Uh, We got one more call. Oh, this is an interesting one. What the hell is this? Every year I've gone to Yankee Stadium on my birthday, August 17th, to see Aaron Judge. Um, three years in a row, the lineup came out, and he didn't play. <laughs> and then the next year, I went for a doubleheader. He played the first game, but not when I had the right field seats like I do every year. So, yeah, but at least I finally got to see him play, but got still kind of upsetting. Thanks. Go Yanks. Bye. Oh, my God. August 17th, Judge just doesn't play? I mean, are are a couple of those injuries, or was he a healthy scratch every August 17th? I would guess at least one of those was broken wrist year. Right. And probably... Did she say every year? I think three years in a row on her birthday, she had tickets to... And then she said last year, so three and then last year? Yeah, it sounds like they finally went to a game and he played. A doubleheader. Well, it sounds like one of those years, there was a doubleheader that day, and he didn't play game two. But he did play the first. Uh, he played the first game, and one of the years she went to a game, but she wasn't in the right field seat, and that was when she finally he That finally was the played. doubleheader. She had different tickets, it sounded like. But I'm saying, when oh, did it start? Oh, that's what we're all trying to figure out as a team. Um, so in in um, in 18, he was out. Remember the shoulder after the home run derby? Okay. So like maybe that was then. So, so last, but, home run derby would have been 17. Last year's the doubleheader. 2021. 21's the double head. Yeah, yeah. So August. So, okay, so here's one. The three years. In 2019, he played August 16th. He played August 18th. He did not play August 17th. Okay, so just a rest day. Tough. That is tough. I mean, COVID year. Is she mm. counting that? Because I don't. Well, Judge was out anyways, <clears throat> but. <clears throat> but I mean, people couldn't go to games, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure. If I don't think counts. that counts for her three years. Hey, thing, you know what, but, though? But she kept not being able to see him on her birthday. Yeah. The August 17th in 2019, where she didn't get to see Judge, she got to see a good game. Yankees won 6-5. to five. Huge. Who were they playing? They were playing Zach Plesak and the Cleveland mm. Indians. Wow. Paxton started, not great. Most Ottavino, recent. look at this. Paxton, then Ottavino, Canely, Britton, Chapman, the formula. Mm. Zach Plesak just on Chris Rose's rotation. So then, yeah, 2020 doesn't count. Because she couldn't have gone, even if she wanted to. And then double header, he played the first game, but she had seats for a different area at that time. Right. <clears throat> so Damn. that's that is tough. Change your birthday, maybe? And then on on 
2018, he was hurt. So she knew going yeah. to that game, like I'm not gonna. Assuming see that's right. one of them, but she, but like but before still, before the if season, if she goes to a game on her birthday every year, it's the hope she's gonna see Aaron Judge in right field. He did play in 2017 on right. August 17th, and the Yankees won that game seven to five, even though the Mets put up four in the ninth to make it scary. Brian Mitchell gave up a grand slam. Hmm. Tried his hardest, did his best. Yeah, well. well. Well, well, him and Chase Headley shared a flight. Probably not. It was the offseason. Yeah. Okay, so Judge, you got to play on the 17th. Yeah, August, I mean, circle the date. August 17th this year. Do the Yankees have a game? Yankee, they have a home game? Sam, circle the date. Yankees uh, 2022 schedule. Have we done, like, schedule talk? No, because it could no, change because we're not even change. excited about the season because no one. Probably no going to change. And what a bummer that is. If it doesn't change on August 17th, the Yankees are home versus the Rays, and it's a series finale, so it's a record day, and it's cap night. Whoa. Whoa. So our caller has a doozy of a time. Let's link up. August 17th. Laura? Was that her name? Yeah. Laura or Bora, I forget. Laura, happy birthday. Tough stretch. Tough home. Uh, they go August 12th through 14th at Red Sox. Then three home series in a row. Rays, Blue Jays, Mets. Hmm. Then they head to uh, the West Coast. Should we just do a whole schedule preview episode? It, yes. that's I, lo- I Yes, but... But then, well, you no. got to hope you take two out of three from Cleveland and then you head on the road. <clears throat> you just got to survive the Houston series. Why don't we draft? <laughs> we draft like series. I want to win that series. <laughs> <laughs> I too want to win that series. <laughs> don't care. Oh, the Tigers in August? Oh, God. Let's punt on that. No, I can't. Don't care. I hate that. Call up Davey again just to pitch. In the words. Of E.E. E. Cummings. Of Herm Edwards. You play to win the game. Um. Yeah, that's kind of old school thinking out of you. <laughs> it really is. Because sometimes you could play just to uh, persevere. Mm. Rest. Fortitude. For the next games. Fortitude. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's the episode. That August is a weird, kind of just a weird schedule month. Overall, that stretch you discussed. Yeah, they, they do a... They go at Cardinals, then at Seattle, but don't continue a West Coast thing. Yes. They come back to Boston. I did notice that. It is it is weird. Then a West Coast thing at the end of the month. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of a... For like the dog days of summer, August, whatever, when you have a lot of injuries usually. and It's kind of a it's dog starting to drag. Yeah, did, did you hear that, Jake? They go... They play Seattle off day, go to St. Louis, mm. then go to Seattle, off day, come back for the Red Sox. So they have an isolated, like, West Coast, just mm. Seattle series. So, yeah, that'll be... So, like, the, that Cardinals-Seattle series, August 5th through the 10th, they are not going to try. Judge not even traveling. Because then on the Davey 12th... starting a game that week. They start... A big stretch against the Red Sox, Rays, Jays, and Mets. So Seattle, you've won that series August 8th through 10th. Or at that one, but the Yankees aren't putting Jim their best effort. New Yankees team. <clears throat> Story. Aaron Judge is sitting on the 10th. Olsen. Every single Monday is an off day in July. Look at that. That's nice. Hey, you know, I know people Something normally, will probably get a rain thing, yeah. but yeah. People yeah. normally think of me. In this topic, um, especially around Valentine's Day, Twisted BB in the chat, and I think it's fair. Is nobody else heartbroken that Tyler Wade is gone now? A little bit. I think there was there was kind a Wade th- call in there, similar to the Sessa boat. A little bit. Like it just seemed like we got to the spot with Wade, where it's like this is kind of nice. Now he's gone because we want to get the team more athletic, so we got rid of Wade. What What's the biggest? Example of um, a move that broke our heart 
that like <clears throat> based on like the rest over playing. Like there was like I, I feel like there was a couple oh. times over the last two years where I was like, if they do this, I will like cease being I a feel, fan for a day. I feel like and a, a, again, not a shot at this guy because he's just a baseball player that got put in a lineup. I think there was a couple Mike Ford three whole days that we were just like, no. Oh yeah. You can't do that. He hasn't hit. Yes, there was definitely, and like Odor at times, like when they just kept running out the same, like yeah. just changing the lineup. And, and they had their weird stuff with lefties, so it'd be like Odor not only playing today, but we got him back. You got to slide. The Yankees continually to, slid a bad lefty up the lineup after just for the sake years of, having of a lefty. saying we don't need a lefty at the top of the line. That's the most, that's what broke my heart. There you go, found my answer. I Mr. think there's Tyler. a lot of epi- there are a lot of pregame shows where you can watch my heartbreak yeah. reading and the we, lineup. We did like multiple. We punted the pregame show. Yeah, whatever we that did, day like, was we did, when we, we did the speed the, run. When we day. did the five minute pregame show because we just were like, well, if the Yankees aren't going to put out a lineup. We aren't either. Um, that there's was one like main one, but that was most heartbroken I've been in the last two years. So there you go. All right. That's the episode. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back on Thursday. Do we have any interviews or fun stuff lined up? I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll let you know. I've we'll got let a mini know. series plan. Michael K. People like that. Go back and listen to the K episode and if Curry. you haven't. Yeah. And Curry. Goodbye. Some interviews. Go Yanks. Coming. Tell them Grams. Thanks for all the Go Yankees. Fun.